It was a warm Saturday afternoon in mid-July. Down a quiet little lane, the door to Herman Hamburger's toy shop stood open to catch the afternoon breeze. Bright red geraniums bloomed in their window boxes, and a lazy cat stretched and yawned and delicately picked her way along the cobbled lane. Four teddy bears were sitting dozing in the warm sunshine of the toy shop window, looking cute and cuddly as of course all teddies do, when they were woken by footsteps coming down the lane. Two men stopped outside the shop. They didn't look like shoppers. In fact, they looked very suspicious. They were Shifty Malone and Nasty Bygraves. Both wore dirty raincoats with the collars turned up and kept looking around them as if they expected to be followed. When they were satisfied no one was there, they started to talk in low voices. I tell you, it'll be a singe. She's dancing in a ballet swan lake tonight at her big theatre up in town. We'll post as autograph actors and kidnap the famous ballet dancer, Dame Cherie's turnover. Yeah, yeah, you did ask for a thousand pound to give her back. <laughs> it's easy peasy. Quiet, Shifty. Someone's listening. No, boss, there's no one here. It's just a bunch of fat teddies in that window there. Yeah, and they can't hear, can they? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's go. We fix to get ready. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We need a pen for a star. Today had been a quiet day in the toy shop, and now it was time for Mr. Hamburger to go home. Oh, is that the time? Oh, well, time to shut up the shop. Good night, my toys. Good night. Sleep well. Sleep well. Sleep well, did he say? But doesn't he know there's a full moon tonight? And when there's a full moon, a strange thing happens to those four teddy bears in the shop window. They get an itching in their paws as their nails start to grow long and black. And a twitching in their ears as they grow long and pointed. And a twitching in their noses as their faces become wolf-like and horrible. Doesn't he know they turn into werebears? Did you hear those men this afternoon, Howler? Something's got to be done to stop them kidnapping Dame Turnover. Oh, yes, it has, Grizzler, rotten crooks. Yeah, laugh at us werebears, would they? Call us fat, eh? What a cheek! We'll cover you, though. What are we going to do? We can't come out looking like this, can we? Everyone will see us. Well, they'd certainly notice all four of us. But one of us could creep around unseen. I'll go and rescue Dame Turnover. I'm just the one to do it. Well done, Howler. We're right here for you. Good luck. Good luck. Howler arrived at the theatre where Dame Turnover was dancing that night. There were lots of people milling around, waiting for her to come out and sign the autograph books. Oh, right. Here I am at the stage door of the theatre. What a lot of people about. I've got to keep out of sight behind this car. Oh, no. Nasty Bygraves is walking right up to Dame Turnover. Excuse me, excuse me, uh, Dame Turnover, can I have your autograph, please? Certainly, my man. Have you a pen? If you would just come over to my car, madam, I've got a pen for you there. Uh, well, uh, this is rather unusual, and there are so many people, but, uh, oh well, if you insist, uh, but I must be quick. My fan's waiting, you know. That's it, madam. Just here, madam. Won't take a moment, right? Shifty, quick, push her into the car. Right, I'll go. <laughs> help! Help! I am being kidnapped! But unknown to Nasty Bygraves and Shifty Malone, Howler had been watching all this, waiting for his chance to save Dame Turnover. Oh, now's my chance. Here I go. I'll get those two and rescue Dame Turnover. I'll show them who the werebears are. Looking straight in the eyes of the villains, Howler made the most terrible howling sound you've ever heard. Oh. For a few seconds, Shifty and Nasty were frozen stiff through deafness and had let go of Dame Turnover, who by now had fainted. Whilst checking that she was okay, Howler saw the two crooks about to run away, and he let out another howl oh! and attacked them, biting their legs with his pointed teeth and scratching their hands with his long black nails, stopping them from getting away. Who ain't everybody? Stand back, stand back. Make way for the police. It's the poison blue. Time for me to go. 
Hello, hello, hello. What's going on here, then? And with the last bite of Shifty's tasty kneecap, Howler ran off through the crowd. Oh, oh, where am I? Dear, dear, madam, you're all right now. Oh, oh now I remember. These two horrible men, they were trying to kidnap me. Oh, oh. Dear, Sarge, these two horrible men are Shifty Maloon and Nasty Bangraves, the two well-known crooks. So they are, lad. Right, you two. You've got some explaining to do down at the station. This way. I tell you, it was a teddy bear with big teeth and claws, and oh, he was horrible. Yeah, yeah. I did a little dolly track to beat you up as well. It's <laughs> true, it's true. It was there, all howling and gnashing. <laughs> oh, dear, you will have to do better than that, lads. A teddy bear. <laughs> Next day, it was all over the papers. Police foil kidnap a famous ballerina. We could tell them different, of course. But who would believe it was Howler? Back in the toy shop, four cuddly teddy bears doze in the sunshine of the shop window. That is, until the next full moon.